Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. We are going to be talking about the London Baptist Confession, Chapter 4 on creation. We're going to look at the subtle differences between Chapter 4 on this confession and then the Westminster, as we've been doing. There are three paragraphs in this chapter, and in the Westminster Standards, there's just two paragraphs. There is a reason for that. Basically, Paragraph 2 in the London Baptist is split into Paragraph 2 and 3 with a few small additions. So we'll look at those. I think they are pretty important. So we will dive in here in a minute. But let's go ahead and pray and ask the Lord's help. And then we will talk through. I got a new sponsor I got to tell you about. And then we will get right into it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your grace. Your mercies are new every morning. And it's the morning. We want to acknowledge who you are, that you are altogether different than creation. We are created and we look at everything that's in the world and its beauty, and we just say thank you. We see you behind it all. We see the detail, and we turn to you, and we say thank you. We get to see sunsets and mountain peaks and beaches and water and all the beautiful things. No matter where we're living, there's something beautiful around us, and we just thank you for creation. Thank you that you created us in your image and called us to, uh, to bear fruit and multiply and take dominion and all the good things that come with creation. God, we acknowledge your glory and we live for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, Reformation Heritage Books, get your 10% off. The Shepherd's Crook, 10. Then Barbell Logic, if you're not getting strong, try to get strong and look into Barbell Logic. They can really help. I really appreciated my time with them. Matt has been really helpful and just, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving working out and getting strong. It's been a lot of fun. I encourage you to do that. And then a new sponsor that you're going to hear an ad for a little bit later is Rise Nutrition in Anna, Illinois. If you're looking for clean products, that's what they're wanting to do is specialize in getting the best clean products to you. You know, we live in a world full of toxins and everything crazy and hormones and all that kind of stuff. So what they're doing is, is putting together good, reputable companies that are trying to make clean products and then putting it in your hands. You can get 10% off for the next three months by using the coupon code SHEPHERDS10. Rise Nutrition dot shop is their website. And if you're a local you can go to the store and still use that coupon code and get that 10% off. And they're getting ready to open a shop in Marion, which is great. They also have a gym, Rise Performance, that's in Anna and in Carterville. And the cool thing is if you order, you can pick up, if you let's just say, you know, you live here in Carbondale or Marion or something like that. If you order from the Rise Nutrition shop in Anna, they can deliver it to Carterville and then you can pick it up. So that's kind of a cool thing. For everybody else that's not local, if you're looking for clean products, stop by the other guys, uh, 10% off, Shepherds 10 and it's called Rise Nutrition. So you'll be hearing more about that next three months. Very excited about that. All right. Chapter four, in creation, incredible. The problem of Romans one, that Romans one puts its finger on is, is God tells us the problem is that mankind in our sin has suppressed the truth. And we started to worship creation over creature, or create, sorry, creation over creator. That's the problem. It's a perpetual problem of paganism, but it's the perpetual problem of even our day to day where we have this subtle paganism where we worship the self, which is still worshiping creation over creator. But the reason there's such an appeal to worship creation is because it is beautiful. God has made this world, even in its fallen state with such beauty and natural revelation reveals so much about God because we recognize the grand design that's in it and the beauty that's there and God and his kindness, even in his common grace to give creation to sinful mankind and let us experience beautiful things. It's just awesome. But we're going to walk through some of this in chapter four. We're, we're in creation. I'm just going to read it all because it's a short chapter and only three small paragraphs. But I want you to see it. I want you to hear it and recognize a few things about it. So we're going to talk about the subtle slide to liberalism as you reject the created order as stated in Genesis chapter one when it comes to literal six day creation. Theistic evolution needs to be a thing of the past. We need to get rid of that completely and embrace the supernatural world that God invites us into and basically just believe what Kim Han's been telling us to believe all these years. Just believe Genesis 1. God created everything in six days. Here, here's what we get, paragraph 1. In the beginning, it pleased God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for the manifestation of the glory of His eternal power, wisdom, and goodness to create or make the world and all things therein, whether visible or invisible, in the space of six days and all very good. Can we just reject old earth creationism and embrace young earth creationism? I think there's a simple thing. And, and by the way, this issue, along with the rejection of male, female, which we're going to see here in just a minute, uh, lady preachers is always the slide into liberalism, but also a, a sign that a church or an organization is slipping into liberalism is just ask them what they believe about creation. 
if they're diving into theistic evolution, just rest assured that most likely, let's see, oh, I may have had echo on there for a little bit. If I did, very sorry. Ah, that's a bummer. Okay, I just turned it off. Somehow or another, the echo gets turned up on my phone or on my microphone, and it ends up sounding weird. Sorry about that. Okay, if you want to know what where an organization stands, just ask them what do they believe about Genesis 1, 2, and 3, and then pretty much you're going to find out if this is a, 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 an institution that's built for the long haul or not. This is a critical front door to understand really quickly where the church stands or where the organization stands based on what they believe about Genesis chapter 1. So the six-day literal creation, let me just say this, God has created a mature universe. And the way I've explained it before, let's just say you are, it's, it's day seven, it's day eight, and there's a scientist, a modern scientist, or a modern the, the, theistic evolutionist, and they're there on day eight, and they're observing nature, they're observing Eden, and they're talking to Adam and Eve. Okay, and they just say to Adam, there's this debate, you know, how old is the earth? And the theistic evolutionist and the scientist of the day, they look at everything. The geologist is there and he's, you know, looking at the rocks and the layers and all this. And they're saying, okay, well, there's ridges here. There's mountains, there's valleys. This takes time. <clears throat> Clearly, this ravine here has taken hundreds and, and then millions of years to, to, you know, erode out this canyon. And then the tectonic plates have pushed the mountains up and it just takes all this time. And look how much time, look how old this, look at the trees, for goodness sakes. The, the trees are, are old. Look at the rings, cut the rings, look, look, look and see how old. And Adam would be looking, he'd be like, hey guys, literally this is like a week old. I mean, this is, and I'm like two days old now. And so is my wife over here. She's two days old because they were created mature. And so, I mean, I think this is a simple way to, to say that God created a mature earth and universe it has the appearance of age, and we just need to accept what Adam would say to us and what God has said to us in his word is this earth is about six, about seven to 10,000 years old, something like that, based on the genealogies. We're, we're looking at a very young earth, and this is a great thing. It has the mature appearance of age, but God created everything in the, in the span of six days. Those are literal days. Now, Spurgeon believed in the gap theory. He and you know Schofield popularized that, but not that they would have agreed on or basically anything, but Spurgeon, in, when he republished the London Baptist Confession, he kept this chapter basically intact to a T. So he still embraced this confession, but somehow squeaked in that uh, that gap theory. And I think that's silly. I think we just need to reject that. Uh, if Spurgeon was here, he probably would tell me why I'm silly. But anyways, paragraph two. After God had made all other creatures, he created man, male, and female with reasonable and immortal souls rendering them fit unto that life to God for that which they were created, being made after the image of God in knowledge, righteousness, and true holiness, having the law of God written on their hearts and the power to fulfill it, yet under the possibility of transgressing, being left to the liberty of their own will, which was subject to change. Now, this is where we split the uh, paragraph two and three in this chapter compared to the uh, Westminster Standards. So if you just look at chapter four of their confession, you'll see just one and two paragraphs, and then some of the wording is almost identical, but we have a few additions here that I want to talk about. So number one, God made us male and female. That's critical. Again, when it comes to this chapter, this is where people go awry like crazy today in our day, is you just want to mess with the image of God. And the reason people want to mess with the image of God, and that's why abortion is so, uh, just the murder of babies, is so important to so many people or they just love it is because the the more glorious something is the the more susceptible people are to idolizing that thing the image of god is stamped upon the male and the female so people worship the self and then end up sacrificing that which is glorious which is the you know babies but there is glory in the image of god created male and female so god created us male and female that is mankind but then this addition to the baptist confession i think is critical for us to understand and the wording is this rendering them fit unto that life to god for which they were created god designed our bodies to fit our genders male and female male and female and god fitted us to the life in which he called us to live so he made us the way we are, and then built us to fulfill that role that he created us for as the male and the female. And that's seen most naturally in childbearing, but it's also seen in our size. And every society is recognized through just natural revelation that the man is the protector and the provider, and that the woman is the nurturer. I mean, it, our, our souls are masculine and feminine. 
with these immortal souls that we have within us, but then our bodies are fit to the way God made us as our gender, which is awesome. But then one thing we need to understand about paragraph two is that there's something fundamentally different about Adam and Eve and us. Adam and Eve did not have a sin nature. That happened. We're going to look at that in, in chapter six, and we're going to identify that. And we're actually going to see the covenant of works in chapter seven, as we they, they mentioned that here as well. But clearly, Adam and Eve were, they had the law of God written on their hearts, and they had the power to fulfill it. They were free in a way that we are not free, that we are not free or come into this world free. <clears throat> and then they had this possibility of transgressing, and they were left to their own liberty. And that liberty was subject to change. So they had the law of God on their heart, written on their heart. And then besides the law of God written on their heart, paragraph three says this, besides the law that was written on their hearts, they received a command not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they had this command, do not eat of the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which while, while they kept it, they were happy in their communion with God and they had dominion over the creatures. So as they kept the law they would that was written on their hearts, the command then that directed their heart and they directed them of what to do and not do, then things would have been great and dominion over the creatures would have would have would have happened and Eden would have been pushed outward. They sinned and rebelled again, chapter six. And from that point forward, man has had a sin nature because we were with Adam. He was our representative. He was our covenant head as he received that, that covenant of works, which he sinned and rebelled against. So something fundamentally we have to understand is that there is a difference between human nature, pre-fall, post-fall. Pre-fall, freedom, liberty, in a way that we don't have freedom and liberty as we come into this earth. We have a sin, into this world, we have a sin nature. So this is chapter four of the London Baptist Confession. And I think it's critical for us to understand the glory of creation. If we don't understand this chapter, which of which I am a full subscriber, then what we inevitably fall into as mankind is we inevitably fall into Romans chapter one, even uh, as, as basically every society has. We have a sin nature, and that sin nature is most clearly manifested in the fact that mankind worships cre a creation over creator. And chapter four tells us that God is creator of all things. This is creation. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Be on the lookout later this week. I'm going to have an episode coming out with Pastor Bill Smith, who's a good buddy of mine here in town. He ministers here in town. We're going to talk about staying strong, not just through your 40s, but staying strong into your 50s. He's, I think, 50 years old now, and he is an absolute monster. So we're going to talk about that. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.